I titled today's Neville Goddard conversation, Who You Love Loves You. And so the premise of our conversation is this quote here, in which he says, Do not waste one moment in regret, for to think feelingly of the, we could say, seeming mistakes of the past is to reinfect yourself. So as soon as we imagine anything that implies love, we enter into a state of love. And as we continue experiencing our day-to-day life in relation with others, anything that implies love, we maintain that state of mind of love and notice that others show up relating to us from the perspective of love. We will notice this when we're walking down the street. We will notice this when we interact with people. We will notice this as we continue to experience Anyone and everyone. If, for whatever the reason may be, thought of unlovely shows up in mind, we have the opportunity to let it pass, to not identify with it, to remain in the state. We notice that this becomes easier and easier each day. One of the things that we find to be very helpful to maintain that state of love and see the love play out in our relationships with others is this quote here. When you see someone in despair, can you represent him to yourself as he would like to be seen? And can you persuade yourself that what you see is real? To the degree that you are self-persuaded, he will become that man. So in relation to the state of love, if for whatever the reason may be, we identify with the thought in relation to despair in association to another person, we can further purify the mind by representing them in our mind's eye from the perspective of love, by thinking lovingly, whatever that implies to you, by feeling lovingly to them, whatever that implies to you, or think feelingly towards them, whatever that implies to you. And what happens then, we further acknowledge that loving state. We then see that person change. One of the opportunities that I have to practice this information is during consulting. People show up and tell me, this is what I love. This is what I would love to have in my business. This is the kind of relationship that I want to have with my clients. And I have an opportunity to maintain that state of who I love loves me. And I usually have this book that I keep with me where I take notes. And a thought pops up in my mind, such as, they are that person now. And I write that down, recognizing that they are what they desire to be now. I'm imagining them lovingly on their behalf. And I now know that I have persuaded myself and I've entered into that state. And what I notice is that they come up with their own solutions to the challenges. They start to see things differently. The change is happening real time between us. And when I ask them what changed it, they'll come up with their own story as to how they got to the conclusion, how they now see their business, their relationships, their desires from the perspective of being that now. Symbolic of that state of love. And one of the effects of this is I maintain that state. So I believe we all have this opportunity every day while we're relating with people to practice this. As a person practices this, they'll notice that they'll maintain that state. And they will notice, as I have noticed, that their friendships, their relationships, their family, wherever outside of where they apply imagining lovingly on the behalf of another, also represent that state of love. And so all of this is spawned from the mental state in which I identify with. And from your perspective, this is all spawned from the mental state that you identify with. As Neville has suggested all throughout his lectures, to imagine lovingly on the behalf of others. 
And so how does Neville suggest entering into the state? It's by creating an imaginal scene that implies. And so he says, I bring them before my mind's eye, and I congratulate him on his good fortune. Because he is now gainfully employed, I allow him to accept my congratulations. Because I do not see a man unemployed, I see him employed. And he knows he is in my mind's eye, for in that state I have pruned him from the unemployed state and once more reshape the branch that grows in the garden of God. Tomorrow people will see him, as they could not have seen him before, the pruning that took place within me, and he will be gainfully employed. All of this is happening in mind. As I referenced in Tuesday's video, the Kabbalion, the universe is mental, and the outer world is a reflection of what is in mind. And so as we maintain that state of mind of love, we see love, we experience love, and we continue to automatically acknowledge love, thus experiencing love wherever we go. After a while, this becomes a habit, and that state of love represents the concept you hold of yourself and reality. And so the state that we identify with mirrors as reality, refracts out as reality. As he says here, we aren't pretending. We completely abandon ourselves to those garments. States. As we've been discussing, there are infinite states. It's all inside. We could select any state and identify with that state. The outer world is a reflection of that state. And these infinite states exist within you. And so let's go a little deeper into this. He says, And so we start with the I. For the I, as in awareness, has neither face, form, nor figure, but it does mold itself into structure by all that it consents to and all that it believes. And few of us know really what we do believe. And so I recommend working with The Power of the Subconscious Mind by Joseph Murphy to identify what we are subconsciously consenting to, subconsciously believing, and create auto-suggestions to further encourage and automatically, as he says here, mold itself into the structure by all it consents to, to how you experience love. As he says here, do not waste one moment in regret, for to think feelingly of the mistakes of the past is to reinfect yourself. So we identify through our experiences what we're identifying with, and we suggest to ourselves how we truly desire to be via imagination, Five sensory and imagination. I like auditory, so auto-suggestion. And anything that you suggest to yourself that you identify with, that is what we are now. And so to further emphasize this, as he says here, mold this inner formless I into a form which is then projected as environment and the conditions of life. And as mentioned, the way we do this is going back here. When you see someone in despair, can you represent him to yourself as he would like to be seen, to release the prejudices and symbolically represent them as love? And so he states, So the changing of the feeling of I is a selective thing because unnumbered states are infinite states, but the I is not the state. The I, as in formless self, as in awareness, I, the I believes itself, or we might not have known that we believe itself to be the state when it enters and fuse with it. So he was presented with a state and without the faculty of discrimination in his youth. I've mentioned this many times. We have formed through our own suggestion within, in relation to experiences, certain beliefs about ourselves, certain beliefs about others, which we can call unlovely, and so we have the opportunity to bring awareness onto this and release those beliefs by identifying with a lovely state. And we have the opportunity to maintain that state by imagining lovingly on the behalf of others and yourself all day long. And as you continue to do this, and has been the experience with myself, as well as the consulting that I've done with therapists, counselors, organizational leaders, consultants, showing them Neville's work. And they applied it, and they also see the same results. 
And each of us has this ability. Each time we auto-suggest, conscious suggestion, imagine on the behalf of ourselves and others from the perspective of love, it becomes automatic. And as I would mentioned earlier, one of the effects of it is you will see this vividly and accurately, love playing out with your romantic life, your personal life, your friendship, people out in public, wherever you go. From my experience, from back in the days when I was wavering into unlovely states, I would experience people from that perspective. And so now wherever I go, people are friendly to me. We have great conversations. They want to meet up. And they show me many different forms of what I would consider to be symbolic of love. And so this information from Neville works with vivid accuracy. He says, I can't tell you how long it's going to take, but I'll tell you this much. It can be measured by the feeling of naturalness. As we've been discussing, feeling is the secret. Feeling of naturalness. He says, you can wear a feeling until it's natural. He says, the moment the feeling becomes natural, it will begin to bear fruit within your world. And again, to emphasize, this has been my experience and also the experience of many others that I've spoken with that have applied this information. What happens is this becomes a natural way of life where you recognize in all naturalness that who you love loves you. And what you may notice, as I have, is you have completely forgotten the beliefs that would bring a person into an unlovely state. And so I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and further encourage this with an auto-suggestion. We can say, who I love loves me. Everywhere I go, I experience love. People show me love as I show them love. Love is my natural way of being. Love is my authentic way of being. I feel the naturalness of love everywhere I go. Everywhere I look, I see love. Everything I imagine represents love. People transform in my presence to represent love. The outer love is a reflection of my inner love. And thus I know who I love loves me. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.